Good morning. Today is going to be a very long travel day. We're just about to head out from our hotel in Langkawi to go to Malacca. And we are going to be using all forms of transportation today, including a ferry, buses, and grabs. So it is currently 8, 10 in the morning, and we'll see you when we get there. We started out with a plan, which was going to go very smoothly and we didn't need to update you on anything, but things have changed. So the initial plan was to get the ferry at 9.30. According to the website, it was going to take an hour and a half to then get us into Kualaketa, but then you have to take a 15 minute grab to Elmore Sitar. Yep. <laughs> so we'd have got into here at 11 o'clock, got a quick grab and then got the bus at 12.30 to head down to Malacca, which is our end destination for today. However, we got on the ferry, everything was going seemingly as planned, there didn't seem to be any major interruptions or anything like that, and we got in at 1.15, therefore missing our first bus, and it's meant that we haven't got to the bus terminal until about 1.45, so we've needed to get an all new bus, which is set to go at 3 o'clock instead. Really, really not the plan. Tell God your plans and he'll laugh. That's like plans of mice and men not go awry, all of that kind of stuff. So here we are. We are waiting on some lunch, which feels very overdue at this point. And then hopefully we'll get a bus which will take us all the way down to Malacca. I'm personally not frustrated because our travel day is being extended. I'm only frustrated because we've now paid for two buses. It feels like it's my fault, even though I was misled by the information on the ferry's website, because I felt like I was being cautious and leaving in an hour and a half between when we were scheduled to arrive here and when the bus was supposed to depart. But that's water under the bridge. We bought a new bus ticket. We're at the bus station. It is what it is. Life might look ideal, but sometimes blank happens. For the record, I don't blame you at all. It's just unfortunate. Uh, I think this is kind of a lesson to anybody who's planning some travel in Malaysia. Whatever the website says is going to be the duration of your journey. Expect a lot. After a mere 17 hours of travel, we have finally, finally made it to our accommodation. It is now one o'clock in the morning. We are absolutely pooped, and so we are going to go to sleep and show you a little bit more of Malacca tomorrow. See you in the morning. Good morning from Malacca. We are going to start our day by going across the street from our hotel to this food court that our host has recommended to us. Apparently there's a lot of good breakfast options, so we're excited to check it out. So we have gone for a couple of tried and tested options for our breakfast today. So we've gone for a coffee C, which is coffee with condensed milk, which is always delicious and never lets us down. And then we have what is known as Roti Chennai Tulor Bawang. Essentially it's an omelette with onions and egg in it. We tried it when we were in KL on that walking tour and it was superb, so very excited to try it again. 
today we've decided to do a self-guided walking tour of Malacca and the whole city is a UNESCO World Heritage Site. The reason for this is because Malacca is steeped in a lot of history. Mostly colonial, but even before that, then Malacca was one of the original settlements in this area, which became its own sultanate in its own right and lasted for nearly 200 years. It was then taken over by the Portuguese, and then to the Dutch, and then to the British. Each of those different empires had hold of Malacca for about 150 years each, up until the Second World War, where it was taken over by the Japanese, then given back to the British, and then Malaysia became independent in 1957. Because of that eclectic history, then there is influences in this city from each of the different colonial eras. Up to now, I think we've only really seen British colonial architecture and history. So it's going to be fascinating to see colonial architecture and history from other empires besides just the British. We're starting with the Christ Church, which is right behind me. This is the oldest Protestant church in Malaysia, and it was built in 1753 to commemorate a hundred years of Dutch rule. away from Christchurch is the Queen Victoria Fountain. This was built for two different reasons. The first one was to commemorate Queen Victoria's Diamond Jubilee, but then when she did pass away in the same year in 1901, then it was also to commemorate her life. Also situated in Dutch Square is this Dutch style clock tower, which is called Beng Sui Clock Tower. It's 134 years old and done in the same red color as a lot of the other buildings that the Dutch built here. The Dutch are famous for orange, and I think that this is the Dutch orange, even though it maybe appears more terracotta. is also the, forgive my Dutch, Stadthaus, which is also known as the Town Hall. This was built by the Dutch, as I'm sure you can surmise, back in 1650 as a seat of government. It was then used as a government building for a couple of centuries after that, but nowadays it hosts a history museum. Right next to that is the Proclamation of Independence Memorial. This used to be a Dutch colonial building, but then when independence was proclaimed just across the road from here, 
they decided to convert this building into a museum which details Malaysia's road to independence. And finally, right beside the last two stops we made, so super conveniently located, is the Malacca Sultanate Palace Museum. And it is a replica of the palace that was built in the 15th century to house the Sultan of this area before colonial rulers came in and conquered the area. Classy as ever, we've come to Family Mart for lunch and we're having some onigiri and sharing a matcha milk tea. After my glow up, then we spent the afternoon just getting caught up on some work. But now we're headed to the Jonker Street Night Market, which is very famous here in Malacca. And it's basically another hawker food market, I believe, like the one we went to in Penang. So I don't know about you, but I'm pretty excited to taste some more authentic local food. Cannot wait. To start our night off, we are going for curry fish balls. Let's give this a try. Mm. Exactly as you expect, the curry is really, really nice. It's got a little bit of a kick behind it, which is lovely. And then there's definitely a big fish flavor coming through. I assume it might be like sardines or something similar. All in all, lovely. The next thing we've decided to get is barbecued quail eggs, and you get the choice of five sauces. The ones we went for were chili, mayonnaise, and barbecue. Which one should I try first? I'm thinking either barbecue or chili. Okay, let's go for chili. actually get a lot of yolky flavor with the quail egg. It's really good. It's kind of hard boiled in the middle, but then the outside is more fried. Pretty delicious. There hasn't been quite as much unique stuff to try on the savory front as we expected, but there is still some good stuff. So I've opted for some sausage and otherwise some meat skewers. So let's give this a go. Oh, that's really good. This pork and some kind of like a tangy barbecue sauce is absolutely lovely. Perfectly cooked, really tender. I'm a creature of habit and have just decided to go for satay fish balls this time instead of curry fish balls. Just as lovely and I love that peanut sauce. I'm surprised how well it goes with fish. I don't get it. So I read about this on a blog. It's a coconut shake and it's made of coconut water, coconut flesh, and vanilla ice cream. I'm a little bit nervous because typically I'm not the biggest fan of coconut, so I'm hoping that the vanilla ice cream kind of compensates for it. But here's our dessert for tonight. This is so creamy and it's a light coconut flavor because it mixes so well with the vanilla ice cream. It's really good. After an awesome time going up and down Jonker Street Food Market, I think we can both say that we are very, very happy with our choices and kind of stuffed. <laughs> That's for sure. I think it's been just a really, really beautiful day in Malacca. What do you think, bud? I've had an amazing time. I really have enjoyed just walking around this city because I felt like we were able to do it at our own pace. We got to see lots of history and we've had some great food and our hotel is great. So it's been a wonderful time. 
Yeah, I feel like um, it's kind of weird because it feels like this second half of our Malaysia time has been the best of Malaysia so far. So glad we're getting to experience it now. It's Pretty always much. great to end a trip on a positive note. Exactly. But I think that's about it from us for today. So until next time, take care. And keep smiling. That's really nice because you actually get a lot of oaky flavor of yoki flavor, <laughs> not oaky flavor. Manita, you're honey. Yoki, but my nani. That's my nani. Hurrah.